All right, folks, what I have here, obviously, hopefully, is a pyramid. The base is a square. It's 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters. And what I would like to do to this object is to take a plane, a two-dimensional like piece of paper, and I'd like to imagine or have you imagine having that piece of paper really rigid and cutting right through the object, okay? So I'm going to try to do that right now and the object or the, the the command is clipping plane all right so there it is clipping plane now it says what's the first corner of the plane well i'm going to make a plane that's congruent well the the shape is going to be a square but planes go on forever i know that's mind-blowing but in rhino they've, they've got to have some kind of uh defining feature for the plane and so they stop it you know right there you can see it's kind of red in color and they give you this little handle down here so this is my clipping plane. Now, if I move the object up here, the square, and I actually, I don't want to do that with that red handle. I want to grab the gumball. Um, if I move the object up and down, you can see that it's going to cut different cross-sectional sized squares. I mean, they're all squares though, right? Because I'm going parallel to the base. Let me, let me go over from the top view here. Because they're all parallel to the base, I moved it over when I grabbed that little red handle, right? Um, so it's not centered up on the pyramid anymore, but you can see that it's cutting all the way to the side. That's an idea that the plane goes on forever, right? Um, <clears throat> so I don't know if it helps you to kind of have me move this back over the middle a little bit. But anyways, I can move this up and I'm getting all kinds of cross sections. Each one is just a square that's similar to the base. They're all getting smaller. Now, let's say I rotate this square. Okay, and I'm going to rotate it. I don't know. I'll rotate it on this this red axis over here. I don't know x axis or y or whatever. So now, do I have a square anymore? No, I don't think that's a square anymore. That looks like a trapezoid. So our well, one of our tasks today is to determine what is the shape of the cross sectional cut. Now, could I rotate this thing enough to make it not even a quadrilateral? So let's say I rotated it so that it's standing straight up and down. Okay, now let's look at the shape. Oh, it's still a trapezoid. Could I move it back a little bit and have it be a triangle? Could I ever get it to be a triangle? I think I could if I could get it to go right to the very top of the, you know, right through the vertex, I think it would be a triangle. Now, what it's doing is it's snapping uh, um, you know, the amount. So let me see if I can turn that off. And so that it'll slide smoothly. Uh, it's still moving. See, I'm not an expert at Rhino. I want it to go right to that point right there. I don't want it to, maybe that'll allow me to move it a little bit. Uh, no, that's going to shrink my object down. Ah, control Z. I don't want to do that. I just want to move it over. So that plane, I got to grab the plane again. And, um, yeah, it's snapping somehow. So anyways, I want you to try to imagine that if I move this yellow right to the vertex, it would be a triangular cut. That would be a line of symmetry. So let me show you the drawing that they, they show us in the book. That's where I'm trying to get my plane to, right to get right through the vertex right in there. And um, I've got some, I've got some, uh, let me zoom in on this. I'm trying to draw some cross-sectional uh, pieces in here. And you can see there's a triangle that would be going right through that green, the green, when the green cuts right through that blue pyramid, it would form a triangle right in there. And that triangle would be going right halfway through the pyramid. This would be plane symmetry. Let me zoom out for a second. That's what I'm trying to show you right there. This would obviously not be plane symmetry because the top of the pyramid right there would not be equal to this bottom portion right down here. And so a plane symmetry is going to be one that cuts the solid into two equal pieces. All right. So that's our task today. We're supposed to visualize and, and describe what the cross-sectional shape would be like. This is a square. This is a rectangle. This over here or, or trapezoid, right? So this side would be bigger than this one up here. So this one is not probably a rectangle. It's a trapezoid. Um, this one would be a triangular cross-section. Um, and we're also supposed to be able to identify plane symmetry. All right. Now, if you need more help with that, um, keep watching my video. If you're like, hey, I got it. Go ahead and try the first bunch of problems that ask about plane symmetry and cross-sectional cuts. All right.
So for people that need a little bit more help, let's try a different drawing. Okay, so I'm going to do a new sketch. I don't want to save that sketch and I'm going to do small object centimeters and I'm going to try to make a cone this time. OK, so it says, uh, you know, well, where do you want your circle? We'll make it 10 centimeters in radius. And how tall do we want it? I don't know. We'll make it 20 centimeters tall. And let's try a clipping plane on this one. So if I go clipping plane and I say, well, what's my first corner of my clipping plane? Uh, let's go back into a different viewport and let's just choose, you know, a basic plane that would be parallel to the bottom, just like we did on the other one. And <clears throat> now if I grab the object and I drag it up, you can see the cross-sectional cuts are circles again. Well, not again, but they're they're uh, similar to the base like we had on the other one where they were squares, right? If I rotate the cutting plane, let's rotate this guy. And let's look at the shape that we get when we rotate it. Now it looks like an ellipse. You know, it's not a perfect circle. It's going to be a little bit more like an oval, right? Some people call those ovals. Let me do a control Z to undo that movement right there. If I went and I rotated the thing 90 degrees, let's see if it'll let me do that. 90 degrees. Now what shape do we have? We have a triangle. So when we talk about cross-sectional cuts, we're wondering, you know, what is the shape of the two-dimensional surface after the plane is cut through the three-dimensional object, right? Now, as I move my cutting plane over, what happens? Well, we get, whoa, look at that. We get parabola shapes, right? Uh, this is called a conic section. When we're cutting a cone into pieces, this is called a conic section. Um, if I keep moving that over, look at that. Isn't that crazy? We get different cross-sectional shapes. So. That's our task today is to describe, you know, what is the shape of the cut? Hey, thanks for watching my video. Hope that was helpful.